Hey guys, oh, welcome back to uh, this video. I wanted to um, share a couple of stories, both positive and negative, from my experiences slash the experiences of the people that I've worked with um, through this COVID pandemic over the last year. It's crazy to think that it's been a year since like first taking on um, COVID patients in my hospital. And I wanted to share a couple of these stories to like just kind of document some of the things that I and those around me have experienced. Um, obviously, this will be like HIPAA compliant. Um, I'll change identifiers where appropriate and whatnot. Um, but this pandemic has been crazy and I think it's changed most nurses more than we realize, or maybe you do realize it. Um, for me, it it's like when I'm in it, I don't realize the struggle as much or I don't realize the crazy things that I'm experiencing until I take a step back and if I tell someone about an experience or just have a moment to like reflect on what happened during my shift, it, it then like hits me. I don't know, it's hard to explain. So I have, let's see, sorry, I have, my, I have them on my phone. I have, I think, seven experiences um, that have happened to me slash like my coworkers um, that I wanna share that have happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of these will be like positive and some of these are, are pretty like dark. So um, just be forewarned, but um, let's start with something uh, positive and that was extubating our first COVID patient. Um, so when COVID first hit, I'm in Arizona and like I said, I'm an ICU nurse. Um, we only had a couple COVID patients. We didn't get like full blown hit really super hard initially. And so I remember our first COVID patient, um, this was a young patient, someone that you wouldn't necessarily expect to get this sick from COVID. And we, um, we babied this COVID patient. And by babied, I mean that like we just, we did everything and anything to like, we kept this patient in the ICU for longer. Um, we were very hesitant about extubating and whatnot. I wanna say this patient was intubated for probably three to four-ish weeks. Um, but I remember when this patient got extubated, it was like, everyone was celebrating. We were so excited. We were so happy for this patient. And um, it was like, it was a really big deal. And uh, the patient actually wrote us a note uh, probably several weeks after they got discharged like from the hospital and rehab and all that um, to kind of share their experience of being in the ICU as a patient, being like a, a, one of the first COVID patients and um, it, was, it was very humbling to have like that first patient that we extubated um, because there was several more that we didn't even get close to extubating, which I'm gonna talk about that. Sorry, like I said, all my things are on my phone. Um, let's see, okay, so that was a positive story. Let's do something that's not so positive. So um, I saw the lowest sats that I've ever seen in my, um, time as an IC nurse. I've been an IC nurse for almost five years, which I guess is like kind of long, but not that long. Um, but I saw the lowest oxygen sats on a patient that I have ever, ever seen where they're still alive and like a perfect um, pleth. Uh, so this was a legit sat, but the patient desatted down to 3%. And this was during a tube exchange. Um, the patient was on a PEEP of 20 and 100%. And it was a very difficult um, tube exchange. So uh, I have never seen SATs get that low and be like legit. But yes, 3%. Um, that was a shift I was being a charge nurse, doing the charge nurse role. And during that same shift, I also helped assist in uh, intubating a patient who was pregnant. And then a couple minutes later, doing a bedside C-section. Obviously, I didn't do the C-section. Um, the OBGYN was there, but we had a COVID patient that was just not doing super well. We ended up needing to intubate. Um, baby didn't like the intubation, and um, we ended up doing a bedside C-section, um, which was the first for me. I know lots of babies have been delivered in ICUs uh, before. We've had a couple. I've never been there personally, but this was my first one 
that I was at. Um, I'm also pregnant right now, and I was pregnant at the time when this happened, and it was just, it was like a crazy experience. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a very hard thing, I think, for anyone to experience seeing someone so young um, that should not have necessarily been that sick from COVID be that sick and then having to deliver their baby like in the ICU. So that was that was crazy. Um, another story, let's see. We had lots of families that got sick with COVID, like several of the family members all were in you know, the hospital or in the ICU. And in particular, we had a husband and wife who um, were with us for a couple weeks, not doing super well. And um, they ended up both passing away at the same time. We actually rolled their beds in together so they could both pass away and their family could um, be there for that. So that was another sad story. Uh, sorry, I know these are so sad, um, but I know you guys probably appreciate hearing this and have experienced a lot of these things yourselves. Uh, let's see, another story. We had a patient who whose um, sibling was in the ICU and the sibling passed away um, and the other patient was still intubated and we had like a note to, on our like little uh, report sheet that said like, um, the patient wasn't aware yet that their sibling had passed away, um, which is sad because obviously this patient was intubated and sedated and it's like, who is going to tell them that when like that patient is also so critically ill and to hear, you know, that your sibling has passed away just a couple doors down, like very, very sad. Um, another thing was, oh, Doctors not coding patients, even um, if families were really insistent. So our intensivists are amazing, um, but we got to the point where they basically had to say, we cannot keep coding or we cannot get to that point of coding your, your loved one because it's just, it, they, they are so, so, so sick. And that's really hard when, um, I don't want to say that option is taken away, but that that option is taken away from families. And I feel like as nurses, we know that for the most part, if patients are that sick that they are coding, um, their outcomes are are not good. Their mortality rate is not is super high. Their morbidity rate super high. Um, but to like hear these conversations that the doctors are having with families, basically saying like, "Look, they are so sick. It's not appropriate for them to be a full code." Um, is was kind of crazy and I know like I've heard it in little bits you know like those conversations prior to the COVID pandemic but when we were in like full pandemic mode it was like every single shift these conversations were happening okay I wanted to share two more stories that are both kind of happy <laughs> since a lot of these have been depressing um, but we had a patient whose birthday was uh, happened while they were intubated in the ICU and obviously a COVID patient and um, so for the family, we actually sang the patient happy birthday and like recorded us singing it and sent that to uh, the family. Obviously we had kind of formed a close relationship with the family over the past several weeks. So we knew like it would, they would be okay with it. And, and it was only sent to, you know, the family, but it was um, just something that I'll always remember that like my coworkers and I did for this patient. Um, I know the family really appreciated it. I don't know actually how the patient ended up doing overall, but like I think it meant a lot to them that uh, we did that. And then another happy story that I have is um, we had a patient who had been with us for a while and it was actually like their one month anniversary of being in the ICU, like intubated with COVID. And as the pandemic was kind of dwindling down, our surge was dwindling down, we were closing some of the ICUs that we had opened up for COVID. And so for this particular patient, they were our like last COVID patient in this unit. It was actually them and one other patient, but the other patient was like going to be going off the unit for a scan. And so like the nurses and I were kind of like, well, what should like we do? It's like this patient's one month anniversary. They're like the last patient in this makeshift COVID ICU that we've had like what should we do and so um i wasn't the nurse i was actually being the secretary at the time but the bedside nurse was like well let's play music and give this patient like the best bath they've ever had which is like such an icu nurse thing to do but um the patient wasn't able to tell us like what they music they liked so we just guessed based on their birth date like what type of music they would like and the nurse blasted the music 
like gave this patient a really good bath, bed change, made them all super clean because like most of us probably know and have experienced like during the pandemic, a lot of things kind of had to go to the wayside and not saying that like patients didn't get baths, but it definitely wasn't the consistency and the quality that we can when we only have one or two patients. When you've got multiple patients that are super sick, a bath is not necessarily always a priority. So it was kind of nice to, you know, put the music on, clean the patient up super, super well. And it was like a celebration for them, but also for us of like, we're closing down this unit like this pandemic has hit us so hard, but it's coming to, I don't wanna say coming to an end because I don't know if we're gonna have another surge. I'm sure maybe we might, but I hope we don't have a surge that big to where we're opening up all these like makeshift ICUs. It was crazy. So those are a couple stories from my time working um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. If you guys wanna share some, um, feel free to leave them down below. Obviously make sure they're like HIPAA compliant change genders, change ages, change whatever. Um, so that way the stories are, are safe. But um, I hope hearing some of these experiences are like help you feel, I don't know, enlightened, but also that like I'm in the same boat as you guys. I've been in the same boat as you guys and I'm experiencing a lot of the same things that you guys are experiencing. Um, and yeah, so I hope it's helpful and I'll see you guys uh, in my next video. Bye.